If you are watching this video, then I'm pretty sure that you have your eyes on KCT 2026 examination. Now, here's a question for you uh, that how well do you know about the exam that you are planning to crack in 2026? Now, there are hundreds of students who just jump into preparation without knowing anything about the exam, without knowing the pattern and here's where they miss marks, their precious marks they lose right and also i have seen hundreds of students who just miss the application form they are not able to fill the application form and are missing the examination there's so much confusion about the exam dates when the registration is there when the exam is there and all this confusion can be cleared if you watch this one particular video where i'm going to break down everything about kct 2026 examination so in this video we will be talking about the exam pattern the tentative dates the syllabus the resources and some beautiful and smart preparation tips that will help you to ace this examination right so let's talk about the introduction why should we write this KCT examination what with what it will give us so if you qualify with good rank for this KCT examination then what all courses are available for you so you can take admission in engineering architecture naturopathy and yoga veterinary okay you can take for veterinary b pharma second year b pharma and pharma d farm science courses where it includes bsc honors in agriculture bsc honors in sericulture etc bsc nursing medical dental ayurveda unani homeopathy bpt bsc allied health sciences bpo professional courses for medical and dental you don't have to give the kct examination but you have to register for kct okay I I'll be uh, discussing that and these all courses colleges you can go where if you are interested in the most loved state of the country that is Karnataka so if you want admission in Karnataka then you have to uh, you have to write this particular examination okay now second thing that we are going to discuss is the exam uh, pattern but before that there are different courses I told you right so if you are interested for engineering then what all subjects you have to study or what all subjects you have to give exam so physics chemistry and maths is mandatory if you want farm science physics chemistry maths and bio is important if you are planning for b pharma then physics chemistry maths you can write or physics chemistry biology is also fine next for veterinary science and animal husbandry naturopathy and yoga and bsc nursing physics chemistry and bio is required so now you decide which stream or which course you want to study and based on that what all subjects are important for you and start making these subjects your strong point from now onwards okay now let's move to the next thing that is exam pattern which is very very important so first of all nowadays when many exams are conducted in online mode kct still follows offline mode that is pen and paper test okay in the medium you have a choice here you can select english medium or Kannada medium and then the number of sessions see so the number of sessions are actually four but i have taken it as a uh, engineering background so i'll write it actually four you have okay physics chemistry maths bio four sessions the exams are conducted okay for every subject there is one exam physics is will be conducted in one session chemistry in another session biology in other other session and maths in another session okay so it is subject wise sessions are there four sessions are there okay but generally we, when i talk about this it refers pcm because we are more interested about the engineering courses now what is the question type question type is mcq and the exam duration for each session okay it is one hour 20 minutes okay and number of questions in per session or per subject again it is 60 questions okay now moving forward here I'll give you an example of 2025 timetable how these four sessions are conducted so if you see the in 2025 on 16th of April the exam was there and on Wednesday that is in the morning 10 30 to 11 50 we had physics examination 60 questions and in the afternoon 2 30 to 3 50 we had chemistry with 60 questions now coming to Thursday we have 10 30 to 11 50 mathematics 60 questions and 2 30 to 3 50 biology 60 questions so these four sessions 
sessions are conducted in two days, one in the morning and one in the afternoon session. Okay, and each session has 60 questions. I hope this is clear. And we are generally interested in physics, chemistry and maths because we will, we will be more talking about engineering courses. Okay, next exam pattern is clear. Now we will talk about the marking scheme. Okay, so if I consider the three sessions physics, chemistry and maths, each section has 60 questions. So the total number of marks is 180. Okay, and if you talk about the marking scheme, you will get plus one for every correct answer and zero marks for uh, wrong answer. That means there is no negative marking, which is a good point of this examination. Okay, no negative marking. Now talking about the ranking or rank determination, there is a weightage. 50% weightage is taken from your PU2 board examination. If you are talking about, if you are taking engineering, then 50% marks from PCM. So to, that means physics is 100 marks, chemistry is 100 marks, maths is 100 marks, right? So out of 300, how much you are getting in PCM, it's 50% will be taken. And here we have 50% from KCT 2026, that is out of 180 marks, right? That is how your 50% from here and 50% from here will be added and then your rank will be determined. Now coming to the most important thing that is the exam type questions that is asked. I have already discussed it is an MCQ type questions where you will have one single question and four options and only one option will be correct. Okay, It is not like J or advanced where you have multiple select uh, multiple correct answers. It is only one correct answer is there. And next if you see where you will be putting the answers in the OMR sheet. Okay, OMR sheet candidates will make the answers will mark the answers on the OMR sheet sheet and the sample OMR sheet is released by KEA. So K KEA every year releases uh, the sample OMR sheet. The upper sheet is to be used for the purpose of marking correct answers and the later scanning and evaluation and the lowest sheet will be returned to the candidate after completion of each session of the test. The candidate shall mark the correct answer by ballpoint pen. Okay, so these are some instructions. I will show you how exactly the OMR sheet looks like. Okay, so you can see here this is the OMR sheet. So for every question we have A, B, C, D option and you have to mark the correct answer there and how the marking should be done. You can see this is the correct way of marking and all other here are the wrong methods. So completely you should mark the option. That is how you have to answer your uh, questions. Okay. Now moving towards the next that is tentative date. So I have the complete schedule of 2025 okay, and we will be telling or predicting it for 2026. So the first one is the notification. The notification is out on 16th of January in 2025. So you can see also in 2026 regarding or in the second week of January mostly you will get the second or third week you will get the notification. Okay. Now once the notification is released the application form will start where you can fill the application form form for the exam. On 2025 it was on January 2023 and so you can predict in 2026 third week of Jan the application will start. Then the last date of registration for KCT was Feb 24. So almost one month time is given. So here also we can expect on last week of February. So you will get one month time to fill the application form. And once there is uh, fee payment last date was 25th of February. So same we can expect here also. Application correct facility. So if you have in this application you have to put all your details like your uh, reg if you have any particular reservation its certificate if you are claiming any quota its certificate everything you have to put here while registering for the uh, examination. Now if you have any uh, corrections you want to change or correct it. So in the month of May again you will get time for doing that. Okay. After this the admit card of KCT will be released on 6th of April it was released in 2025. So you can expect in the first week of April you will get the admit card. After that we have exam this year it was on April 16th and 17th. So in the third week of April 2026 we can expect the examination. Next provisional answer key was out the next day same will be happening this year also. The objection window so if you have any uh, thing that the, the, this question answer was wrong this question answer was correct some objection is there you can raise it within four days time will be given and final answer key will be released on 25th of April so or we can say in the last week of April. After that offline KCT document verification takes place okay and most important thing KCT mark entry start date this is important because you know I just now I told you the KCT rank is determined by the 
PCM from PU2 marks and from your KCT marks. So, KCT, KEA will know your KCT marks, but your board marks you have to enter, right? So, for that it was May 7 this year and the first week of May you have to enter your board marks. And once the board marks is out, the KCT marks are out, the final result, the final rank of KCT was out on 24th of May in 2025 and you can expect in the last week of May in 2026, okay? So, now you should be very, very alert. In the month of January and February, you, if you have, if you are planning to give this examination, make sure that all your documents are ready from now or towards the end of like by October, November, December, you can make uh, all your documents ready and fill the application form in the January and February of 2026. Okay, that is the most important thing because this is where the students struggle when their uh, certificates are not ready, when they don't. Uh, so, just go to the website and you can check what all certificates, documents are ready so that you you can keep it uh, already ready before the application starts and once the application starts easily you can uh, submit all your documents right because with documents there's so much challenges regarding verification and all so now let's talk about syllabus so the syllabus is nothing but pu1 and pu2 syllabus so for maths if i tell you for pu1 you have a sets relation functions trigonometric functions complex numbers and quadratic equations linear equations permuta permutation and combination binomial theorem sequence series straight line conic sections 3d geometry limits derivative statistics and probability and coming to pu2 you have relation function inverse trigonometric functions, matrices, determinants, continuity and differentiability, applications of differentiation, integrals, application of integrals, differential equation, vector algebra, 3D geometry, linear programming and probability. You can take a screenshot or these are your PU1 and PU2 chapters. Now moving towards the if you see physics syllabus, okay, so in physics also you have PU1 and PU2 chapters, okay, the list is here. So, 14 chapters in PU1 and 14 chapters in PU2. So, we have units and measurements, motion in a straight line, motion in a plane, laws of motion, work, energy and power, system of particles and rotational motion, gravitation, mechanical properties of solids, mechanical properties of, sorry, this is fluids. Okay, then we have thermal properties of matter, thermodynamics, kinetic theory, oscillations and waves. And coming to physics PU2, we have electric charges and fields, electrostatic potential, current electricity, moving charges and magnetism. You have electromagnetic induction, alternating current, electromagnetic waves, ray optics, wave optics, dual nature of radiation, atoms, nuclei and semiconductors and electronics. Okay, so these are the chapters of PU2. Now moving to the next chapter next subject that is chemistry so we have total 19 chapters here some basic concepts of chemistry structure of atom classification of elements chemical bonding thermodynamics equilibrium redox reaction organic chemistry and hydrocarbons okay in pu1 these 10 chapters are there coming to pu2 solutions electrochemistry chemical kinetics dnf block coordination compounds haloalkanes alcohols aldehydes amines and biomolecules these 9 chapters are there okay now, we'll move to biology. So, biology is not required for engineering, but if you're planning for other branches like uh, nursing or uh, pharma sciences or veterinary sciences, then biology is required. So, you have to do these chapters. PU1, we have these many chapters. So, living world, biological classification, plant kingdom, animal kingdom, morphology of flowering plants, anatomy of flowering plants, structural organization in animals, cell, the unit of life, biomolecules, cell cycle and cell division, photosynthesis, respiration, plant growth, breathing, body fluids, excretory, locomotion, neutral and neutral control and coordination and chemical coordination and integration. Then coming to PU2, sexual reproduction in flowering plants, human reproduction, reproductive health, principles of inheritance and variation, molecular basis of inheritance, evolution, then you have human health and disease, microbes in human welfare, biotechnology principles and processes, biotechnology and its applications, organisms uh, and population, ecosystem and biodiversity and conservation. Okay. So again, if you are aiming for engineering, then this bio thing is not required. Okay. Now, after syllabus, we will be discussing about the resources, okay? So, resources are very, very important and you should be knowing what exactly is the correct resource that you should follow and if you have any other like 
uh, uh, if you are re referring to multiple resources, the thing is that you will not ge get time to complete the syllabus first of all. Second, you will get confused with so many resources. You will not get time to revise from which uh, resource you will revise. That is also not fixed. So that is why having limited resources and revising them multiple times is the key for success in this in such competitive examinations, right? So the first resource that I'll tell you is NCRT book. Okay, very very important. Stick to NCRT. Learn all the concepts from NCRT. Second, make your own short notes. Okay, this is the most important one because during the exam for revision, we will ne need short uh, short notes. Lastly, uh, then we have PYQs. Okay, so PYQs of at least 10 to 15. Sorry, one second. Yeah, at least 10 years of PYQs books are required. Okay, we will be making subject wise uh, resource book at that time. You will get more clarification, will be coming out soon with that. And then mock test. And one very important thing is this channel Diksha. You have to learn, you have to remember this channel if you are preparing for KCT because you can see we are providing the best content in this particular channel for your KCT preparation. Do subscribe it, okay? You will be getting the entire syllabus coverage. We'll do previous year papers, previous year questions, mock test, everything we do in this particular channel. Last year you have seen students have done marvelous performance by seeing our videos, by studying from us. So you can definitely rely on us and subscribe and can follow this channel till your KCT examination is there, okay? Now moving to the next thing we have is some preparation tips. So I'll tell you some basic tips that you should follow but we will come up with a detailed strategy also. So here are some tips for you. First of all start with NCRT plus state board basics. So remember in this chapter in this uh, examination concepts of high level are not asked okay. It is a general concept from your NCRT books is asked but the thing is you have just 60 minutes I have uh, for 60 questions sorry 80 minutes for 60 questions. So time is the one which is very very important here. So you don't have to read big big concepts you have to read the basic concept and you have to be very thorough with that and you have to revise it multiple times and solve n number of questions. Next we have make formula sheets and quick revision because this is the one which helps you to revise quickly during the examination time. Solve past year's papers regularly okay just uh, uh, on weekly monthly basis you should be solving questions. Practice time bound mock test okay so because you know in exam we have just 80 minutes so giving time and then preparing the questions is the best way. Then focus on speed and accuracy and last month is should be only for revision and mock test. Okay, so these are some general preparation tips I have. So that's all in this video and I hope you have got a clarity about KCT examination and what else do you need, what information you need and more. Do let me know in the comment section. I'll definitely make a video on that and thank you for watching. Keep smiling and keep studying.